Good blessed Tuesday afternoon, uh, August the 15th, 2023. It's about 12.15 in the afternoon, p.m. I greet all human beings all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. Doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor your religious beliefs may be. Doesn't matter whether you're the richest to the poorest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't even matter whether you are the proclaimed toughest to the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. Doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, or nor my proclaimed enemies. Doesn't matter whether you like me or anything I say or do or anything that I produce on YouTube, Facebook, or any place else in social media. Uh, I still greet you all with that same universal greetings. What I come today is to talk about uh, an organization, a group in Carbondale, Illinois, that's called Carbondale United. The title itself, saying Carbondale United, that means Carbondale, Illinois, is united as one. But I wanted, I wanted you to take a look at this headlines in the Southern newspaper, which was, I believe, Saturday, uh, sept, I mean, August the uh, 12th, uh, 2023. Uh, from the left, what where, where first they saying interrupting violence. I'm going to tell you one thing that I know for a fact, because I've been going down to uh, Carbondale, Illinois, uh, since March the 24th, 2021, after finding out my son had been found hung in Carbondale, Illinois, on March the 19th, uh, 2021, which has been, uh, today would be 788 uh, 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 days since my son been hung. Now, these individuals talking about interrupting violence. To the left is Van Eichner. Uh, to the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, right after Van Eichner going towards the right, I believe her name is Jessica uh, Hard Rock, something like that. Jessica supposed to be the newly... Uh, elected or the, the, the newly uh, CEO and president of the Carbondale United as of uh, May of or April of 2023 when I was at a city council meeting she said that she's now the newly uh, appointed or whatever uh, however she got the position uh, but she runs the Carbondale United. Next, this guy name is Mike. I know nothing about him, but if he anything like the rest of these individuals, they're not interrupting no violence. If the, if the police in Carbondale can't uh, interrupt the violence and stop the violence, how is they going to do it? It's all about grant money. But then you're going next, Nancy uh, Maxwell. You look down below, you see her with a bullhorn. You look at a lot of places. She used to, when I first met her, she was the CEO and chairperson of the Carbondale, Illinois uh, branch of the NAACP legal department. She gave me a, uh, a complaint form on May the 11th, 2021, and had me to fill it out. And I emailed, I mean, May the 10th of 2021, I emailed it back to him on uh, May the 11th of 2021, some 827 days ago. And do you know today, Nancy Nexwell never responded to my uh, email asking what my status was. She ne They never, the NAACP nor Nancy Maxwell, have even followed up on my complaint, which was against the Carbondale Police Department, discrimination and incompetent investigation of my son's death which they claim it was suicide, but I said it was homicide. And then next to her is Michael Vallett. How I met Michael Vallett when I put the YouTubes up in 2021 about my son's death, Michael Vallett came on my Facebook Messenger 
We're not friends. I never knew him, never saw him before in my life. And told me he was a friend of my son, Brian, who was found hung. Now, he was a friend of mine. He said they was in prison together. Brian got out, went to Carbondale, came back. And him and Michael Valley, she, he said they connected. And Michael Valley was working for a grassroots program like he doing now uh, with this Carbondale United claiming to be a violent interrupter. But Michael Valley, let me tell you about Michael Valley. In the 800 and, and uh, uh, 89 days that I've been going back and forward to Carbondale, Illinois, I never seen Michael Valley and name one of the marches for stopping the violence. Now, Michael Valley was in, I believe it was May of 2021 or May of 2022, when we was had a, a, a George Floyd and a Breonna a uh, Taylor march for uh in in Carbondale, Illinois. Michael Valley was out in the streets marching, but he was protecting the Palestinians. The Palestinians has been just been attacked over in Israel or in Palestine, and Michael Valley was with the Palestinians. Him and a so-called Grand Sheik of the Moorish American uh, Science uh, uh, Temple. Uh, in Carbondale, they was God in the uh, Palestinians so nobody wouldn't attack them while they marched. They wasn't, they wasn't around trying to uh, talk about interrupting no violence or even being involved in any uh, uh, violent, uh, uh, stop the violent marches. But let me tell you something else about Michael Vallett. You see what I'm saying? Michael Vallett, I found out later, why Michael Vallett got in contact with me because Michael Vallett and his white wife, who's a school teacher for the Carbondale Rebound High School in Carbondale, Illinois, they was get Michael Vallett would go to the Samaritan home, which is a homeless shelter for individuals that been in prison like Mike. But some of the people in, in Carbondale was helping Mike out. Mike claimed he was helping the people out at the Samaritan home when he was delivering food for some of the grassroots folk programs to get all this money and claiming that they helping people. But Mike and his wife was on a mission. Katie. Katie Babcock. That's B-A-B-C-O-C-K. That's what that's the name she go up under at the school. She don't go or she married to Michael Valley. She don't go up under Valley at the school because she know that name Valley rings a bell. Drug dealer, murderer. You see what I'm saying? And then an individual to take advantage of people with mental health, so-called mental health, people that's homeless, people that's on drugs. Michael Valley said he would go and get my son's food stamps from that homeless shelter and other people's food stamps and give them cash. Now, Michael Vallon and his wife was caught spending my son food stamps 39 days after his death. Now, if you giving my son money, when did you get, he, he was found dead March the 19th of 2021. We know you didn't give it to him then because that's when the stamps was coming on. We know it, you didn't give it to him in April because he was dead. We know you didn't give it to him in May because we know he was dead. But then you find, I find out that the police question your wife at the school, show you how racist they are. They didn't, Michael Valley's wife is white. They took Michael Valley down to the police station, videotaped him, and took a recording and a written uh, statement from Michael Valley. But you see, Michael Valley's wife, by her being white, the detectives from Carbondale, Illinois Police Department went down to the school and questioned Mike O'Valley's wife about the money, stealing the, uh, the food, uh, uh, spending the food stamps. But look here, they didn't record, they didn't take no state, they didn't take no written statement, they didn't take her down to the police station. She committed a crime just like her husband did. Neither one of them was never arrested, neither one of them. Uh, was ever charged. They didn't do nothing. But let me tell you something. All of these people in this thing, like I said, I don't know the other Mike to the left down here. You see what I'm saying? But if he anything like the rest of them, they ain't about interrupting no violence. They trying to get grant money. Back in April of 2023, might have been May, Nancy Maxwell 
she asked the city council in the Carbondale, Illinois for $450,000 because she said she had seven violent interrupters. Then they need to get paid the same amount of money that the Carbondale, Illinois police uh, uh, officers need, uh, that, that the police officers get because they do the same job that the Carbondale Police Department do, but without a badge and a gun. That's a line of truth ain't in it. Michael Valley, according to uh, Van Eichner, uh, Michael Valley worked two jobs because his wife ain't too long had some twins. So how's Michael Valley gonna have time to do anything? Van Eichner said he, his family and him has a moving company. And most times he told me he's in Chicago, Illinois. So how in the heck is you gonna do any violent interrupting uh, in Carbondale, Illinois? This guy, Mike, this other Mike, I don't know what he doing, but let me show you another lie with Nancy Maxwell. In this same city council meeting, Nancy Maxwell said that she was no longer the president and the CEO of Carbondale United. This was May, April or May of 2023, this, this year. But you look at, Google up this Southern, uh, the Southern newspaper in Southern Illinois, and you read that newspaper where they say Nancy Maxwell, they even got a voice thing, Nancy Maxwell, CEO and president of Carbondale United. So the white woman is just a front. The white woman don't say anything. You don't even hear us saying nothing. But every time Nancy Maxwell, Van Eichner, and these other people from Car uh, Carbondale United meet, they meet with the prosecuting attorney, who most blacks in Carbondale, Illinois, besides the blacks that are selling out other blacks, like these groups right here, getting money, they don't. They don't agree with the prosecuting attorney nor the police department. But just take a real good look at this. This is why my son, I, it's hard for me to get justice. You see, when I got to setting out Michael Vallett, then Nancy Maxwell, the uh, police department, the prosecuting attorney, and these other groups that's getting money from the city and the justice department, they cover people like this here. You see what I'm saying? You see what Mike, they said on this here? Look on Carbondale United's page. They got two pages, y'all. One that you can join and one that you can just see. And every time you see them, this is what they're doing. They're taking pictures. They don't show nothing where they done interrupted any violence at all. And if you read this newspaper, how is the person, how are they going to interrupt some violence? Who going to call them? What numbers they going to call you see what I'm saying? And if the police can't stop the in, uh, interrupt the violence, how can they? But let me show you. This is what they do. They good in taking pictures. Jane Brown said, "With well, Jane Brown would say, a dull night ain't nothing cutting. They talking loud and ain't saying nothing. Let me show you another picture. You see what it say? Fit check. Now look what it says on this here. It say fit check. Both mics say they did not, in fact, text each other before work today. Uh, to coordinate. Coordinate what? Thank you to our violent interrupters for working hard out in the community. What is they doing in the community? Now, you see the two mics? Let's see the other picture. This is what they good in taking pictures. Look, same thing with this is back in June. This is this is Van Eichner and Mike. Fit, uh, fit check. Violent interrupters, Mike, I mean, yeah, Mike, that's Mike Valley and Van Eichner on the same uh, wavelength. You see what they're doing? They're taking pictures. I know Mike smiling, all that money that he done stole from my son and other people. Now, if my son was getting $235 worth of food stamps, during the pandemic, they was giving my son $95 cash if Mike Valen and his wife kept my son cars, that's what drug dealers do. And my son apparently couldn't have known that he was getting $95 because Mike Valen told me that he was giving my son half of whatever his food stamps was. And I said, how much was that? He said, well, about $35. He don't know that I already know how much my son was getting because the police had already told me. And the only reason the police investigated them, I asked him, what was my son wallet at? 
and they found Michael Valley and his wife spinning the food stamp. Now, Michael Valley told me half. If he was giving my son $35, then you don't have to be a mathematic genius. If you got to count on your fingers or a calculator, that would be that my son was just getting $70 worth of food stamp. My son wasn't getting no $70. He was getting $234. I said $235, $234.95 cash. He told the police detective during the interview, he was he gave my son $95. If he was, even if he was giving my son $95, that means he wasn't giving my son nothing because my son don't know he was getting $95 on his food stamp. So Michael Valid, if he did, we'll just say hypothetically speaking, I don't believe him. You can look at his face. He got the face, the smile. Both of them got the smile of devils. That's what they put in the black community. Individuals like that, they infiltrated to Fred Hampton and Mark Clark back in 19, December 1969 on the west side. You see what I'm saying? Playing like they was a part of the black community, but gave the government information how they went in there and shot and killed Fred Hampton and Mark Clark. That's what these brothers is. Both of them been convicted of drugs or murder. You see what I'm saying? But Michael Vallett, if he gave my son $95, then my son didn't know he was getting $95. So Michael Vallett and his wife kept my son $30, $234. But look, he told me different. The police ain't going to check. They ain't even check his phone. You see what I'm saying? They didn't even take his wife down. That was a crime. But this is what they do. They cover it up. But one thing about me, if I die today, like one of my family members say, my two young daughters down here, they ain't going to forget. It's a shame Brian got other brothers and sisters and they ain't doing a doggone thing. They ain't saying a doggone word about the death of Brian. They won't even march and protest with me. But that's their business. I ain't mad at y'all. That just go to show you, if you don't care about him when he was dead, you didn't care about him when he was alive. And I don't give a doggone who don't like what I'm saying. The only ones out here, as far as his siblings, is me and my two young daughters. Ain't nobody else. But let me get back to Michael Vallett and this guy here. I trusted in in Van Eichner. For a minute, I trusted Michael Valley. Go back to uh, 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 Nancy Maxwell. I trusted Nancy Maxwell for a while. But Nancy Maxwell and the rest of them, believe me, look, in they, look, in, look anywhere in, on their pages where they can show you where they interrupted any violence anywhere. Michael Vallett is a thief, still a drug dealer. I don't know if Van Eichner is still selling drugs, but I know he ain't standing on what he says he's standing on. Because if they was, Nancy Maxwell in this paper here, and every time she had a meeting, she mentioned the fact about her stepson uh, who was shot and killed, but she ain't mentioning nothing about Brian Lamont Johns who was found hung. That go to show you that bullhorn in her mouth, Jane Brown is turning over in his grave telling her to sit yourself down. Because you're talking loud and you ain't saying nothing. Tracy Chapman said it real good in the 1980s. Talking about a revolution. Peace be still. 